Welcome back to another episode Sailing Ruby Rose. Today we are on actually a boat. It is a completed boat in so much as the hardtop has been glassed on, the target arch is on, the deck is on. And now today with our friend Mike, we are gonna talk through the interior fit out that is well and truly underway. Mike, thank you for taking your valuable time to talk us mere mortals through this boat. Yeah, it's very much uh, taking shape and looking much uh, much more complete now. We've got the, the roof on and, and joinery coming in, so. Yeah, then yeah. let's get on with this because we've got a lot to cover today. So keep watching, lots to show you. So Mike, let's just start galley walkthrough. Show us everything, because honestly, it looks amazing. All right, so galley units are in. And again, this is all, you know, you've got your ash finished here. So as I'm facing forward, this is where your, your oven will be. Yep. So you've got the oven coming down this way, okay? The stove top is over there, isn't it? Stove top's here, yeah. And you've got plenty of space from, from the window away from the stove top. So your stove top here, so either LPG induction combo or LPG stove top. Yep, that's what we're going for. And then this is all coming out as your island. So then we've got storage on this side and then you've got the fridge over on this unit here. So you've got a fridge here and then you've got your double sink, okay? Yep. So this is actually the same size sink as we use on the 1600 and a smaller sink here. And, and the philosophy is you have a large sink where you can fit pots and pans, etc. This is where you do your, you know, you do your washing and then you typically stack your plate and then you can rinse off on this side so just like one large room. one small just yeah like and i think all. we've actually opted for the salt water rinse anyway to save water okay indeed yeah so you'll have a, a a tap in the middle here and then a salt water can go on the back as well okay one thing i do want to kind of run now that this is all in place the hard top is bonded on yep roof's on tiger's on everything is glassed in so we can see that and just to point this out black black is this carbon fiber as well the inside surface is a black gel coat finish, but all the structural component is carbon, but just this is just a finishing. Okay, so carbon, panel. carbon, and this is the yeah. carbon. Christ, there's a this lot is a carbon, carbon roof, so it's an optional carbon roof. I guess, I guess like from now that it's all bonded in, I can just take a there, just how bloody big it is. It's huge. What is it? Enormous. Eight, nine meters long? It's huge, yeah. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So galley cabinetry dry fitted in. I want to just get a shot of those two sinks. So what are we, 16, 18 inches by 16, 18? I like the design. Yeah. And I think I saw the tap, also known as a faucet to our American customers. Faucet, indeed. A faucet. Yeah. Aircon unit is over there. Aircon unit's in, and you can see connected directly straight into the aircon for the forward cabin there. And that is simply the unit for the forward cabin, or does it? No, that's a convertible into an aircon outlet there. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. So one that... aircon outlet there, and then also diverted into the forward cabin. And then down here, we've got some early electrical stuff going in. If you sort of shoot through this way, we've got some switches down here, base switches, and then you've got the 12 volt panel, um, breaker panel down there, so. Perfect, perfect. So Mike, let's talk about the cockpit, the helm. What have we got for sure? Us? In the original design, we had the LPG tanks down here, and we decided to move those forward for a few reasons. And I think that's been explained as to why we want the LPG further forward in terms of access down here. But one of the things that we probably didn't explain previously was that you've got the steering system coming through. So the helm has steering cables that come through to here. And then they go through a, a sheave here where they then go across on a, on a carbon crossbar. A similar system that we've been using for, for many years on our other boats. Really robust, really, really nice, simple system. But you do need to be able to access it for, for maintenance from time to time, just doing your, your periodic checks. So being able to access down the bottom here is important. So what we will have is a, a, we have a removable uh, shelf in here so that we'll be able to then put just basic storage. Down the back here, typically, in a boat you're, you're putting, whether it's mooring lines or, or potentially a fender, you're gonna have barbecue gear, you're gonna have probably fishing tackle, the stuff that you don't want in the boat, so. Stuff that it, smells. Exactly, yeah, down the back here. So if, if you do have the fridge freezer option, you might have an ice maker, you're gonna lose storage space fairly quickly, so being able to put that sort of stuff down the back here makes sense. So it's gonna be a fairly basic finish here. We don't want it to be too heavy gear down the back, and it'll be something that we can just sort of pull out so that we can then take a, a removable panel out the base so we can access the steering from here. Perfect. Now we've got a big, a very, very big bench seat here. Big bench seat here, yeah, exactly, so. And importantly, you can sleep on that. It's long enough to sleep on, and I don't, honestly, I'm not being lazy here, yeah, but yeah. for off watch, when Therese is on watch, I like sleeping. Indeed, near her, yeah. Near her, not for, because I'm being weird, it's just safety. 
Sure, absolutely. And again, like all of our other boats, actually, the saloon table does drop down, so you can make a pretty decent bed as well. And with our trifold door arrangement, same as the smaller boats, you've got that inside outside where you can rest well, but you're still connected to whoever's on the helm. Really, really um, Can good I put you safety. on the spot and ask you a question? Because I, I know that this is up in the air. Is there any actual lip between the cockpit and the saloon? You've got a minimal lip. You can see it here, actually. A minimal lip, but you've got a huge drainage through here. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. basically it's what, an inch, an inch? Yeah, Fine. it's sort of, well, uh, probably three quarters of an inch, I'd say. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. And the helms, the helms are now in, all covered in blue protective. Exactly, paint. so these, these helms, they're done in the gray, the same gray as the roof. Working through, I mean, obviously we look at all of the ergonomics on our other boats, we transfer what works over to here. So you imagine having a, a one meter wheel, you're using your arms over the top of the wheel here. We've got a much larger helm layout than on, on our other boats and even the 1600. So represented here, we've actually just got a, a standard seven inch plotter. Now, final locations are not per what we're seeing here, but we were just trying things out. Essentially, we're gonna slide this over and we're gonna put our light switches here because when you're inside the boat, sometimes you just wanna open the door and put on the, you know, the step lights or something like that. So this is accessible from, for non-skipper or crew, basically, to be able to come in and, and do those switches without interfering here. But then we've got space for 12 inch screens. We've got, you know, electric anchor winch control and, all the engine controls up here. So we've got this all laid out and we'll, we'll, uh, we can show that cool, to also. Can you show everyone these? I love these, the line bins. I don't, I know that they're not, they're not, not, not hinged yet, but yeah. So basically, let me just uh, take this off. Ta da the winches, but everything is captive. I want a neat and tidy cockpit. I don't want lines, I don't want tripping hazards. Coming off, you've got both winches here and then you've got a void here, so it goes through. All the lines go in and then we've got drainage down the back there, away from the helm seat. So, Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And like our other boats, we are set up to be able to sit here and stick your head out. You get great visibility from here. I can see through the boat that side. I can see down the line here. Quick question. The davits, carbon fiber? Carbon fiber davits, yeah. Mm, nice. Yep. nice. Yep. Let me just uh, go this way, so, okay, now. Probably best if I jump in, I can probably explain. Okay. So my hard on for these things are decent rose joints, which I see that you have. <laughs> so this is the linkage bar that we've got. We've got a crossbar that goes right the way across the boat. And the way we have them set up is the same as our other boats. You've got a wire or a cable that goes down under the cockpit and goes both ways, either side. So basically each helm is pushing and pulling that crossbar and then that then steps down onto this. So all we're doing is we're dropping down about a foot to bring it down to tiller height. This being the tiller on the top of the, uh, the rudder post, okay? Ah. And I know so, that the rudder post is completely sealed. There's no water ingress. Correct, yeah, that's a sealed unit there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So if you were to strike something with your rudder, quite often that action jams it up into the hull and you might want to disconnect one side from the other. So you would come down and you would take this pin off, take that around, well, really you'd actually do the other end, to be honest with you. And that, that crossbar still works 100%, but you're just disengaged from one side of the yep. boat because perhaps if this is jammed, you release that and then the other side is free to use. Cool. Okay, so very, very easy to do that sort of stuff. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. Okay, uh, anything else to see in there or are we done? Well, I think just generally, um, you just see the sort of progress that's going on here. We've got battery boxes, all the electrical associated with the engines in here and uh, getting close to, to done in here. Okay. All right, let's take a quick yep. dive down there, sir. So, uh, the walkway, the corridor. So this boat has an optional item here, but basically the standard boat has your two wardrobes here with, with doors opening this way. And then for boat one, we've got the optional unit, rather than having the lower desk, yeah. they've gone for additional shelving. And then this will have a, a face on as well. There'll be a couple of shelves on this side, so. Yeah, some of us still have to work, unfortunately, so we need the desk. <laughs> the lower desk just offers a, a, an out of the way space to do work or, I mean, we call it a vanity, but it really gets used as a working space as that's much what, as anything. Yeah, that's what everyone so. uses it for. And yeah. the other thing about it is there's a lot of people that are owners, uh, couples that both of them work. Yeah. And sharing workspace just always yeah. needs to rouse, as you know from many relationships. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> don't know what you're talking about. So can so, I just ask a few questions? This, this is going to be wood no, no. face. This will be an upholstered panel going oh, over the top here. Okay. Yeah. Fine. This is just basically our template size yep. that we've used. We'll take it away, check it's right, put it back in again. And upholstered. We're going to go upholstered. Okay. Yep. So to walk through then. Same, we've got paneling going on the side here as well. So you'll see soft furnishings, you'll see fiberglass, soft furnishing, fiberglass. So 
a lot of depth in that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I actually messaged Miriam the other day privately to say, like, your designs are epic. Like, yeah. I really do like what she's doing with us. That's good to hear. So you can see here, but just peel this back a bit. You've got some of that ash. So it's the white ash finish nice. on the bulkheads here. Yeah, that's all in. Beautiful. And then moving forward, now this is obviously just a yeah. three panel, but we've got the bunk in here. So we'll have doors going this way. And then you've got a, a, another door on this side. So yeah, pretty deep storage here. So that's probably, what, two foot? That's yeah. at the depth, what, two and a half foot? Full depth, two and a half, yeah. Two and a half yeah. foot? Yeah. And then obviously lock us down there. Okay, brilliant. Indeed. That's where obviously your iPhone storage is. There's going to be all sorts of charging points up there for everything. Indeed, yeah. And so then, you want a USB outlets there. Yep, yep, yep. And you've got the back wall panel as well. We've got a grey sort of finish on the bulkheads here, mixed in with some of those lighter ash tones. Oh, that's so amazing. There's going to be a lot of depth of different finishes and colours in the interior of the boat. Can I just ask you, this is a bit random, this whole space here, what is it going to be used for? Is anything going to go on the wall there? Yeah. Well, you've got your access here, so okay, yeah, yeah. the whole idea of the island bed is you don't have to climb over somebody to get in. No, no, no. no. Okay. And, and essentially through here, you're going to be going up this side. Yeah. Okay, fine. But the reason I ask is I've just got some artwork that's big and I was going to put it on the wall. Wall art, there you go. Walk in the forward wardrobe. area, we've got a walk-in wardrobe. So we've got storage and then we've got a bench across the front face there as well. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. And obviously the hatch straight above the roof there and there's going to be fans recessed in the ceiling for extra ventilation. And yeah, then you've exactly. got the outlet for the air, the air con, con, which is going in up, up on the top here. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Now I do think that we can definitely see things like where the switches are going to be, everything. It's looking really, really good. Thanks, yeah. Mike. Good progress. Okay, yep. that's, a, that's, a, that's a win. Okay, so let's head down into Starboard. Starboard Hull, Mike. Starboard Hull, yeah. Okay. Take a deep dive down here. Okay, Mike, what have we got? This is Starboard, starboard Forward. Starboard Hull, yeah. Yes. So this is essentially a guest cabin. Yep. Yeah. We've got our, obviously all our headliner units sort of base frame up above. So that's all been templated and we'll have the upholstered panels going in over overhead. Then on our main bulkhead, we've got our laminate veneer. So this is just a, a peel away, but you can see the tone is, it's a clear cover, so it's very much that tone. And then we've got our bunk joinery that goes in so that you can imagine the molding actually drops down and, and follows the shape of the hull. This unit goes in and then, so this is a finished component here. So you can see this part is the final timber. Nice. Actually, um, that's the oiled wood, so finally we're getting a look at that, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Nice. So that's a, it's an ash, with the ash comes out of the US, actually. This is actually a, a mock-up unit. You know, we've used this to template it off, they're now making the final part, but essentially this is your pull-out space. So this is really good for putting loose items both sides, so. And they're quite deep, you know, you can see that's probably, I don't know, sort of 350 millimeters or something, depth-wise similar probably 400 millimeters deep so really good for loose clothing items so we're looking at a bed which is what two meters across by two exactly yeah it makes us good i mean you reach like seven foot we're still putting that right hatch right. up there that's important to look at and the hatch is forward opening so when you're at anchor any airflow you get is going to come straight down through so obviously if you're leaving this door open then that airflow just comes straight through over the people sleeping and then down and out so and just ref refresh another one memory. above you yeah what goes there another set of units for storage yeah so you've got tank here but then you've got another storage unit that's coming over here so that storage unit comes to about that sort of height you can just see the mounts where it's coming down on top so that'll come down to there and then obviously forward of you you then got bunk or or workshop uh, units in the starboard forward four peak area Fine, fine, fine. And these cabinets are going to they're going to swing out like this is just a plywood mock up, and it'll have a stopper on it. But it's actually really versatile. We use these on some of our trimarans, and they, they work really well. Yeah. Fine, fine, fine. And behind me is the workshop area, which we're going to do a whole episode on. Correct. Yeah. At a later date, because I, I, I've spent so much time with Mike trying to work through the fine details of this. Yeah. I want this to stand on its own. So coming back through. So we've obviously got our black water tank for the starboard toilet. Yep. Yep. And then in here, we've got a pantry unit. Okay. Is that going to slide out? No, it'll be, it's a locker door, I think. Okay. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye. Coming through, we've got the starboard bathroom, midship bathroom. And you can see you've got this column's just recently gone in. So we have a mount that goes on top of that. So we've got access to the shower unit goes this way. Yeah. And we've got a removable panel so that we can get to hoses and also access the... Oh, um, so it is actually a separate shower store. Is there going to yes. be a door there or a screen or what's going There's on? There's no screen. The door coming in goes, sorry, it goes that way, I think. There's That's, a lip. So you're indeed, not going to get, yeah, because yeah, I don't so, have wet feet while I'm... So, 
So originally we had it set up so the shower was like this. But what we did instead is we've got the shower coming this way, so the water's all coming down here. Fine, fine, fine. So you're stood where the toilet is, and then behind you can have the, the washing, the washing machine. machine as well. And we yeah. just put all that. Very dark in here, so yeah. And that's still got the shelf that pulls down for everything. Nice. Yes. So that's your laundry area. Perfect. Yeah. Right? So through here, we've had the joinery in. It's been taken out again, but we've got it dry fitted. But you've got all your air conducting here. But essentially, you've got quite a shallow set of shelves here. But as you can imagine, we'll come out probably another sort of 15 millimeters or so from here, really trying to keep it as tight as possible. Because you've got a release angle here, and then you've got a very shallow set of shelves here. And then coming through, Half Cabin doesn't have a huge amount of joinery. We've had um, obviously the side panel work going in for templating. But uh, yeah, then we'll have our, our unit coming across here. But you can really get a good feel of the depth of this storage area. If you want to have something long, surfboard, etc., coming through here, it's not a bad uh, space to be able to fit it in. Yep. So today, heading to Beng Chang Market, a tourist trap. But if you speak a little bit of Vietnamese, it's actually not a bad place to go. So let's head out there. Get on the bike, wait for these traffic lights to change, get into first gear, and off we go. Getting across this roundabout is, uh, yeah. You'll see, 360 camera, hopefully mic'd up. You'll see exactly what the bullshit involves, but it's, uh, yeah, pretty sketchy. Anyway, off to Beng Tai Market. I've got four kilometers of goods of the map. So we shall see. So yeah, this is uh, one of my least favorite roundabouts. The only thing I would say about this roundabout is it has less trucks on it. Like the one on the way to the factory is uh, full of like jacked up HGV driving. Like, yeah, but this, always a little bit of fun. Roundabouts in Vietnam. Hello, hello. Welcome to Life in Vietnam episode whatever. I am at Bentang Market. Bentang Market is famous for being a massive tourist trap, but I just wanted to show you it, just show you what you can get if, in Vietnam if that's what you come, you want the tourist stuff. I actually come here because if you speak a little bit of Vietnamese and you want certain items of clothing, actually this isn't a bad place to be, but there's a lot of hawkers and uh, it's a kind of rite of passage to wander through here. So let's go inside, take a good look at Bentang. Bang Tang Market, and I need to work out that I'm at exit 12. So when I get turned around in here, I know how to get back out. So, Bang Tang Market, just uh, watch and see what goes on here because it's a little bit mental sometimes. Hello. 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 But, uh, you know, and I'm not sure that, uh, the, excellent to know that both Chanel and Christian Dior are now stocking their bags here. Um, but, you know, there's every, the, the place has everything. And there are lots of markets like this. This is a, one of the oldest markets in Saigon. And yeah, from fake Rolexes to fake everything to souvenirs for you to take home to your friends and family anyway look life in saigon it is something that the more time i spend here the more i love it here um and i hope you can see how just attractive it is as a as a place to to visit so hope you enjoyed this episode for those of you that do enjoy what we do give us a like give us a thumbs up i will be back again next week with more life in saigon more boat building as we get closer and closer and closer to getting our boat in the water Take care, everyone. Enjoy what you do wherever you are, and I will see you real soon. Bye-bye.